So this one's a little bit more involved. C of k is defined as the common factors of C and k. And then I'm looking for an answer that satisfies both of these two. So occasionally they give us things like this, where it's defined not as an actual equals to some function of C and k, C plus k, etc. But it's defined as some sort of relationship between the two. So here we have common factors. So given 6 and 24, I look at the factors of each of them, and then the answer to 6 at 24 would just be whatever of these two are common. So it's going to be some set of numbers. Here I'm just looking for one answer. So I can look for the common factors of both of these two and then figure out what's going to satisfy all of them. So now this becomes a common factor problem more than a special function problem. But realize that a lot of the special functions are defined this way. So here factors of 6 are 1 and 6 and 2 and 3, 24, I've got a bunch of factors for, so 1 and 24, 2 and 12, do 3 and 8, or 4 and 6, and then this is a separate one, so 12, 1 and 12, 2 and 6, 3 and 4, and then finally 39, 1 and 39, and actually 3 and 13 is the other thing that goes in here. Um, if you've forgotten how to check if this is divisible by 3 really quickly, then you should go back and watch the test prep math review section on those divisibility rules and sort of shortcuts to be able to see that. And then we, once we get to 3 and 13, we realize that there's nothing else here. So if I were just looking for 6 at 24, I'd say, okay, well, 1 obviously is in both of them. That's sort of redundant. Um, but then I have 6 on both of them, and I also have 2 and 3 on both of them. So my answer here would be 1, 2, 3, and 6, and 4, 12 at 39. All I really have is 1 and then 3. So those are the two common ones. So then if I'm looking for something that is the answer to both of these two, I can pretty quickly see that I've just got 1 and 3, and on here I've got 3, which is D. So the only other type of special function problem that you'll see is one where you're given constraints. So then at the end you're asked for possible values also, and you just have to make sure that you follow those constraints. Um, but this is pretty much what you'll generally see with these special functions, and you should definitely expect them to be on your SAT test and play around with them a little bit if you're not quite getting it. But hopefully this video is pretty comprehensive, and um, join us again in future educator.com SAT math videos.